Great. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church today. It's the uh, fourth Sunday of the month, which is our family service. Uh, Sharon was doing this today, uh, but she's not well, uh, but recovering, so we wish her well. Uh, Ken's bringing our word and things later. Pauline and the team are leading worship and Ricky's playing, so all is well. Let's just spend two minutes, shall we, while we all get organised. Just let's welcome people. Uh, let's have a little walk around and as it's family service, uh, maybe just say a special hello to our children and young people. This morning, let's have two minutes of this. Off we go. Okay then folks, good to see you, let's take our seats and the worship team will continue with our service. Good morning church, it's great to be in the house of the Lord, Amen. Amen. <laughs> the psalmist says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. So we've come into his house with thanksgiving in our hearts. So we're going to raise a praise for Jesus, for God today. Every praise is to our God. So we've got some tambourines and instruments over here. We've got our voices, we've got our hands. We can praise him with our voices, with our bodies. So let's do that this morning. Thank you. 
in one accord. And that's what we have come to do today, in one accord, to praise his name. Hallelujah. What a privilege we have to worship the living God together. Are you not excited? Please be, because we are together in his house. We're alive to praise his name and praise him and thank him for all he's done for us. Isn't that amazing? What he's, yeah, amazing. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you mean it? Can I hear you? <laughs> all right, amen. Please be seated and... Uh, Simon. No. Ricky. Good morning, church. God is good. Ever praise Him. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise is to our God. Amen. I'm going to start this morning by reading to you. First Chronicles chapter four verse nine. Oops. I need to take my glasses off. And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come before you today to praise you. Despite our situations, Lord, we come to praise your holy name. We praise, we, we praise the name that is above every name. All the glory and honor belongs to you. We worship you, Lord. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the God who saved Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. We thank you, Father, for your shed blood on that cross. You took our sins. Lord, we repent of our sins. Our moments of doubt and lack of trust in you. Would you cleanse us, Lord? from all unrighteousness. Help us, Lord Jesus, to walk in your ways. Fill us with a desire to know you more and more each day. We thank you, Lord, that you are a great and awesome God. We thank you that your grace and mercy surrounds us. We thank you, Lord, 
for our families, our church families. From Mr. Mack to young Annabelle and everyone in between, we thank you for our youth, our worship team, our musicians, our technicians, our administrators, our stewards and greeters, our Sunday school teachers. We thank you for our equipment. We thank you for enlarging our membership. We thank you for an outbreak of prayer and healing in this house. Heavenly Father, we ask for your divine blessing in this place so that all who enter will experience your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us. Walk among us. Refresh us. Heal us. Restore us. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Father God, we now turn to those members and friends who are on our prayer vine, those needing a touch of you, Lord, those also who are mourning. We thank you, Lord, that our brother Keith is recovering and making progress. We thank you, Lord, that Peter is now whole. We continue to pray for Sister Florence and the rest of the family. Father God, we lift to you our, our sister Sharon, who has shingles. And though she's making little progress, we continue to pray that it doesn't affect her ability to see. We lift up to you Ben Ray, Lord, who's returned home. We continue to pray for healing and restoration for them both, Lord. Lift up to you also, Father God, my sister Jennifer, who is now at home and, and recovering from the fluid on her heart and her lungs. We continue to keep her in our prayers, Lord. <coughs> Father God, we bring to you Myrtle's friend, the Ward family who lost their son to a stabbing on the 18th of this month. Comfort them, Father God. Wrap them in your arms, Lord, at this sad time. We bring to you, Father God, Mrs. Davis, who's been called into hospital this morning to visit her, her daughter. We lift them before you, Lord. We put them in your loving arms. If there's anyone in your heart at this moment, please mention their names. Father God, we thank you for hearing and answer our prayer. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we come to you. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. So I'm still going through the ladies. Um, oops, guys. Um, I'll start with what's it in the leafy that you've all got. Um, the flowers today are presented by Lloyd. I'm very beautiful. They are. Thank you, Lloyd. And um, there is a gap. I'm um, on next week. If anybody would like to um, bring flowers. Um, that day is vacant. 
um, in the leaflet the anniversary dates are there for us to take notes on. And also, um, we're still looking for wedding photographs. If anybody's got any photographs um, of their wedding day that was taken outside at the front of the church. The dates on the back of the leaflet is as normal, so everything that's advertised there will be happening this week. Thank you. There's also some recycling, if anybody can take some home please. Simon will sort it out in bags for you. If you can take it and put it in your recycling bins this week, thank you. And we'll go the birthdays this forthcoming week. Well, last week was Blandine's birthday. That was on the 19th, so we'd like to wish you a happy belated birthday, Blandine. This week, the 25th, is Lorraine's birthday. Um, I'm not sure if Lorraine's here, um, but she may be listening later. That's on Tuesday. On Wednesday is Ken's birthday. The 28th is Mavis and Busy's birthday. And it's also Claire Adams' birthday on the 28th. So I'm not sure if anybody wants to volunteer their ages. <laughs> feel, feel free. <laughs> Claire, no? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, if you're staying today for tea and coffee, um, Pam has brought some birthday cake in because it was Pam's birthday on Friday and she was a lovely 70 years old. Young, sorry. 70 years young. And Maggie would like to come and speak about Christian aid. Thank you. Right, okay, Christian aid. We've got the two things that we always do, which is the cake sale, which will be on the 14th of May, and soup and rolls on the 21st of May. But we've got two new things this year. On the 12th, uh, which is a Friday, Sharon's offering to do a workshop. Um, it's not clarified yet whether that will be jewellery or cards, but it will be at the same time as Knit and Natter. So the two can happen alongside each other. Okay, so that will be on a Friday around about 11 probably, uh, for you to think about. And Pam's come up with an excellent idea. How many people here count their steps? Either on their phone or on the Fitbit. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep, six, seven. Right, okay. Because Pam's idea is that you get together in twos, and in your team, your team, we see which team does the most steps in a, in well a set time. We'll have to decide on the time. But the idea is that you, you and your partner count your steps over this period and you get sponsors for how many, uh, for a certain number of steps, okay? Uh, we've got to set this up. We'll, we can make sponsor forms, but I want you to start thinking about who you might pair up with to do your steps, okay? A walking partner. Um, and then if you get through to either me or Pam, We'll organise some, uh, some sponsor forms and you can go around and ask people to sponsor you for so many hundred steps, for so many thousand steps, we'll have to think about that and make it uh, worthwhile doing. Okay. Now some of the people who do their steps aren't here today so I'll have to send them a special message. Okay. But um, I think that's, that's a really nice idea because it's not tied to a specific date so you can be doing it whenever it suits you. Okay, thank you. Can we have the offering, please? And I believe Layla and Mal have the change, the loose change um, baskets. James, would you like to come for the prayer, please?
Jesus' name. Amen. We'll now say the Lord's Prayer. reasons. Ten thousand reasons. So many countless reasons for our hearts to praise the name of God. He's with us. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He gives us strength. He gives us his power. He's with us right at this moment. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. The song writer says, sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Sing like never before. Sing from the depths of your soul. He's worthy to be praised.
that day when my strength is fading, Lord, I pray that I will continue to worship you, Lord, even in that moment, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Your name breaks every stronghold. Your name shines through the shadows. Your name burns like a fire. Lord, we are gathered here to praise your name to speak your name and the truth that your name, the power that it brings and what it does in our lives, Lord, to each other, but Lord, to those that we meet, to our work colleagues, our friends, our neighbours. Lord, we want to speak your name. Speak your name and the joy that we have in your name, the promise that we have in your name because of what you ultimately did on the cross, Lord, dying for our sins, dying for our sins, so, so that, Lord, we may have life again, and life abundantly, Lord Jesus, through you, through your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Jesus, to every dark addiction stop. 
They are loved by you, our good, good Father. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Ken's going to bring the word today. up for God, for the one true God. 
You have to tell him what he's all about. Stood up for the one true God. And Jonah went up on a hill above Nineveh and sat down and sulked. It was very hot. It was a really hot day. And he sat under a large plant that grew because he gave him some shade. And during the day, a worm came and ate the plant, and the plant died. And he got really angry with this plant, with God. How dare this plant has died? I'm in the sun. They've... And God said, There's 120,000 children over there. 120,000 children. And you're worried about a plant. And that's where the story ends. And I want to explore that in a minute. What, what is in the story of Jonah? But meanwhile, Maggie's got some colours. So if anybody from year eight downwards wants to go over, and I would suggest any primary school children do go and do some colouring. If you don't want to, if you want to listen to me for 20 minutes, that's entirely up to you, but we're there for you to do. Okay. The story. And there's a real link. I, I, about a year ago, I preached about Ruth, the Moabite woman from Moab. And there's a real link between Ruth and Jonah. If you remember, I don't suppose many of you do, I'm not sure I remember everybody's sermons, there, but the Moabite woman who, according to the Old Testament law, couldn't, her generations, were condemned for ten generations. Turns out this Moabite woman was David's great-grandmother. God is saying, all are welcome. Even a Moabite from Moab are welcome. Jo Jonah's story comes from the same tradition. Jonah thought the people of Nineveh were beyond the pale. And God is saying, no, give people a chance and all are welcome. Same tradition, the same understanding of God. <clears throat> Let's start at the beginning. Jonah is told to go to Nineveh. Capital of Syria, Assyria. Capital of Assyria. It's near present-day Mosul. You'd have heard of Mosul in the Iraqi war. Near, the, near where Mosul is was Nineveh. And for 50 years, it's the largest city in the world. It took Jonah three days to walk around it. Three days. In 612 it fell to the Babylonians. But Assyria, for 300 years, Assyria was a ma the major empire in the time of Isaiah and Amos and Hosea. It was a major, major player. A large pagan city that symbolised enmity with God. A large pagan city. And it covered most of the Middle East. It covered Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon. It was all part of the Assyrian Empire. And they were a real thorn in the side of Israel. Isaiah says that Assyria was the rod of God's anger. The ten tribes, there are twelve tribes of Israel, and ten of them were in Israel, and the Assyrians decimated Israel, and the ten tribes were flew off elsewhere, and there's lots of theories about what happened to them, but actually they're simulated into everybody else in the Middle East, Palestinians and everybody are simulated the ten lost tribes. Of Israel. Only the two tribes, only the two tribes of Israel survived, and Hezekiah was walled up in his big wall, and the Assyrians were there. Some of you will know the story, and they sieged it, and then God came overnight and decimated their army, and they fled. And you can see pictures in the British Museum from the Assyrian side of that conflict. So Hezekiah was around at this particular time as well. So it's in this context of Israel has been decimated 
Judah, these just two tribes left have been walled up inside the city. The Assyrians have left the most powerful country. It's in this context that Jonah is told, go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh. They used, as it said in Wikipedia, unusual torture and mass slaughter. The Bible refers to rivers of blood that the Assyrians left. And they said, God said, go to Nineveh and preach. That's the context. Go to Nineveh and preach. And he ran away. So the question that came to me is, when do we run away? When do we have enough and run away from something? My guess is, all of us, on occasions run away, or we're tempted to. Run away to something, something else. Run away from what God wants us to do. Run away from what we know is right. Run away from sharing the fact that we're Christian. Run away from phoning somebody who we know needs to be phoned. Run away from visiting somebody. What about running away from smiling at somebody? Some of us perhaps struggle to actually smile. What about smiling at the shop assistant? What about running away from forgiving somebody? How many of us struggle with forgiveness? It's actually running away from forgiveness of somebody. We were tempted, um, I was speak on Maggie's behalf as well, the other, a few months ago, our daughter was... Um, baptised in another church. She's over 40 now, so it was a real fantastic time. And then a few months later, her husband was baptised in this other church, and we went twice to support them. And I sat in this other church, and there was other people standing up, and, and worship was great, as it is here, and uh, there were lots of people, and I could sit in the middle somewhere, and nobody came up to me and asked this and that and something else. I thought, this would be nice. I could worship, and 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 I, I could just be about me and God and worship, and not about the church. And God said, "Get back to small heap." <laughs> the temptation to run away, to find something else, to go somewhere else, to do something else. How do we know what God wants us to do? How did Jonah know? How did he hear what God wanted him to do? I would suggest to you that we know, we don't, God doesn't have to tell us individually to forgive someone. We know Jesus told us to forgive. How many times? Is seven enough? Seven times seven. We know he said forgive. Other things the Holy Spirit has to convict us of. But there are some things that we just know is what God wants us to do. And the key question is, do we want to do it? What's the desire of our heart? And I assure you I'm talking to myself as much as to anybody else here. What is my desire? Is my desire to do what God wants? Is my desire to do the right thing? We talked about this in house group last Wednesday. Talking about an act of faith, stepping out of our comfort zone, doing something we know is right but is uncomfortable. And that repentance is actually, Adrian said, use these words, repentance is actually a changing of your mind. It's simply a change of mind. The number of times I've heard people say, oh, I can't do anything different, that's me, that's who I am. Actually, that's, just, that's the opposite of the gospel. The gospel says God can change us if we want to. If the desire is there. And it's interesting, when you step out of your comfort zone, <coughs> that becomes your comfort zone. When you step out of your comfort zone and find actually it's not too bad, that becomes your comfort zone. Then there's another step, a bit outside your comfort zone. Then that becomes your comfort zone. 
Jonah doesn't want to. The story demands that he does, that he sees what God sees. We don't know how he responds to the last words. There's 120,000 children in that city. Don't you care about them? All you care about is this plant? <coughs> little things. It's little things that get in the way, isn't it? Little things annoy us. Little things. Things that don't matter annoy us and get in the way. 120,000 children and you're worried about this plant. That's little things. All of this, stepping out in faith, increases faith and develops us as people to be who God wants us to be. You know, without a pastor, the people who share from up here, do you remember the system? Wasn't that a phenomenal service where they shared from up here? Now I dare say, if they'd been asked in different circumstances, they might have said, oh no, I couldn't possibly. But they did, and they blessed us. And the young people, was it last month? The young people shared a month. So that sharing, people are stepping up, are coming out of their comfort zone here in this place. I think I've identified about 40 people who will be involved in services in the next six months. That's a lot of people. People are stepping out of their comfort zone. The pastoral team, visiting, taking communion, identifying who has needs. Visiting is not easy, the sick. Stepping out of their comfort zone. Many, many people are doing this. Jonah saw imperfections and condemned. God saw potential and forgave. So do we see imperfections and condemn? Or do we see potential and forgive and encourage? Did we think when we became a Christian, that's it? Oh, I'm a Christian now, I can sit back and relax. <laughs> if you did, you made a mistake, my friends. Because that's the start of the process. That's the start of what God wants to make us become. We have a choice about what we see in people. What did Jesus see in Zacchaeus? A venal tax collector who people hated? Or did he see a small man who had potential? So he said to him, I'm coming to your house for tea. He didn't say you're a really bad man. I'm coming to your house for tea, Zacchaeus. What did Jesus see in the rich young ruler? What did he see in the Samaritan woman who'd had seven husbands? What did he see in the tax collector Matthew sitting in the booth collecting money on behalf of Rome? What did he see in four fishermen, rough hewn fishermen, dragging in their nets? What did he see in the leper? What did he see in the blind man? Did he see imperfections in these people who condemned them? No, he saw potential and he forgave them. And each of us, us, starting here, have the potential to develop and to see as God sees through the work of his Holy Spirit, if we want that to be the case. Jesus kept saying, the kingdom of God is near, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, the kingdom of heaven is near. And I believe he wasn't talking about heaven after we die, he's talking about heaven now. It's near. It's in here. It's getting close to him. It's being as one with him. Now we see in a room darkly. Then we will see face to face. We're in this world and we're not those, as it said in Hebrews, who do not belong. <coughs> we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. But to have faith 
sorry, but to those who have faith and are saved. I'll read that again. We do not believe to those, we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. That's who we belong to. We don't shrink back, but we have faith and we step forward. And being saved is a, is, is a we are saved, but working that process through what that means is a continual process. And our role is to preach, to teach, to display the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord, not in Nineveh, but in Birmingham. How do we display the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do we do it with a sulky heart, like Jonah? <laughs> well, they're not very good neighbours next door. Or do we do it with an open heart, a joyous one? Because the message of Jonah is clear. God has a heart for everyone. And our responsibility is to want that as well. Thank you. And I think there's a song we're going to finish with. The young people have been doing the drawings about uh, Jonah's life, I hope. How are they doing? <coughs> <laughs> no. I'm not talking anymore. <laughs> uh, if they want to finish them, they can go in the church magazine if they're, if they're good. What are we going to sing, Pauline? I can't hear them. Good, the goodness of God. The goodness of God who sent Jonah to Nineveh because he loved them. He loved the people of Nineveh. He sent them there and... That's the story, 2,600 years ago. And still today, let's display the gospel of Jesus in Birmingham. Thank you. Thank you.
not just sing of the goodness of God. We act. We display the gospel because of who he is and of what he's done for us. Let's share the grace together. And the grace of our Lord.